Good afternoon, everyone. You're all here nice and early today. I heard we said something about 11.30, so maybe that's why. Usually we have to give everybody time to quiet down and start eating, but uh, thanks so much for being here. I'm Lori Matson. I'm president and CEO of the Tri-City Regional Chamber. We appreciate you joining us for our annual State of the Cities Luncheon. Uh, this is the first time that we've been able to host this event in person since 2019. Uh, and so we're really excited to see all of you. Thank you, yes. It's been a long couple years. Soon we'll hear from our elected officials representing Kennewick, Pasco, Richland, and West Richland, delivering updates regarding their city's strategic priorities and development projects. So I'm gonna turn things over to our board chair, Andy Sterling. She's gonna take, he's gonna take us. <laughs> I didn't say she. I actually, <laughs> he is going to take us through the rest of our program. That wasn't a good move on my part. Yeah. <laughs> Please help me welcome Andy. Oh, here we go. So I haven't got to see you guys in a little while, and I've decided today I'm not going to start with a smart remark because I don't seem to get a lot of laughs. But I may have a surprise or two along the way. Or maybe not. I guess we'll find out. So I am going to get started here. I'm looking over at our mayor, uh, Blanche Barajas. Um, really excited to uh, introduce you here today. Uh, as you're going to find with all of our city officials, their bios are unbelievably impressive. So this day is one of my favorites. I know that most of you show up as it's one of your favorites as well. So let's get going. Mayor Barajas was elected to serve this Pasco City Council in January 2018, was elected mayor pro tem in 2020, and mayor in January 2022. She's the first Latina elected to council and the first Latina mayor in Pasco history. Blanche moved to Pasco in 2005. She has two sons, one in the US Army Reserves. Both are currently attending WSU Pullman. There it is, thank you. She enjoys spending time with them and taking road trips. Blanche holds a bachelor's degree in business administration and an associate in applied science and criminal justice. She currently works for not-for-profit managed care organization and has extensive background in public service. Blanche proudly serves in several committees representing PASCO and several youth awareness coalitions. She is currently the vice chair for Safe Kids Coalition and she continues to volunteer in other areas of the community. Please help me welcome PASCO Mayor Blanche Barajas. Hello, everyone. Are you enjoying your lunch so far? Thank you, Baker Boyer. All right, let me just get my slides open here. Thank you, Dave, again, for the many, many years dedicated to PASCO, PASCO staff, and everyone. Kennewick, Richland, West Richland, thank you again for being here today. But again, thank you to Tri-City Regional Chamber of Commerce for the opportunity for a quick update on what we're doing in PASCO and our many developments. Quick snapshot of um, PASCO's growth with a population over 80,000 people. Um, we are a large city, we are growing, but we have a very large fiscally responsible budget as well as you can tell. Um, with capital improvement plans to help map our future developments, we have over 400 staff employees dedicated to Pasco Communities Health, Safety, um, Quality of Life, and also, just a plug, we are hiring. The graph here shows Pasco's growth. Comparing the bar graph to the purple line, it shows a steady rate growth since 1984. By 2038, we will reach 125,000 population um, city council, as well as staff are dedicated to the strategic planning and follow through to accommodate this growth. That growth in population has also paid dividends in our assessed value since 2002. The assessed value of PASCO has grown an incredible 747%. This has resulted in the city's portion of property tax bill uh, falling from $2 dollars and 39 cents to now a dollar and 32 cents per thousand people assessed value as of 2023 
PASCO has seen a virtual explosion in economic development in the past few years. In the last few years, this growth is the result of the city's focus on long-term planning and development of infrastructure. Uh, with um, major agricultural processors um, coming into the area in key areas, that are seeing either significant industrial, commercial, and, and residential projects um, in the next several months. The city is diligently working on accommodating this growth by coordinating our long-range planning documents covering transportation, sewer, water, parks, and public safety. The city has been actively looking at our zoning and re building regulations to encourage responsible housing development across all categories, especially for first-time and low-income households, which have particularly felt the pinch in low-income stock and higher prices. The city has been recently recognized by the state and national planning organizations for its efforts in urban planning. And from the picture here, you can see some of those uh, corporations that are coming into our region, into our area. This is the value increased increase will only grow by the announced developments coming to Pasco. Most no notably, Amazon is constructing, constructing two $1 million, one million square foot warehouses in East Pasco that will bring about 1,500 jobs to the community. Other major developments such as Dairy Gold Processing Plant in Port of Pasco property bringing in another 500 jobs. The new research plant, local bounty, and a Montana corporation building greenhouses for local produce on A Street. And Tarragon uh, building major warehouses next to Amazon will bring more opportunities for good paying jobs for the entire Tri-Cities. These projects re represent a total of two billion in private development and 3,000 jobs to Pasco. My thanks to our partners, especially to the Port of Pasco. Where is Port of Pasco? Raise your hand. Thank you, Port of Pasco. <laughs> Franklin PUD, Franklin County for facilitating some of these projects. While industrial growth takes off, residential growth remains robust and steady. After a slight dip, single family home starts um, have increased. The city's comprehensive plan effort has identified areas to the north of the city for growth while trying to take advantage of infill opportunities as they present themselves. As mentioned, the city has been coordinating our planning documents to anticipate the public needs for its growth. And I'm sure you have all seen some of that growth as you go through the underpass, which will now be an overpass. Um, especially folk, special focus for, to our downtown Pasco. As of two billion of industrial development wasn't enough, I am pleased to note that the long-awaited Lewis Street overpass project is well under construction in downtown Pasco. The overpass will replace an over 80-year-old um, underpass, which, again, it's falling apart, it's obsolete. Uh, the overpass will better connect East Pasco to downtown for residents and businesses. This project is a result of many, many years from previous council and current council um, staff and the public. Special thanks again to our legislative and federal delegations who secured funding that makes landmark projects possible. Thank you again. And just a little snapshot of some of the work that we're doing in downtown Pasco. Now complete is the park, Peanuts Park, Farmer's Market Redevelopment is helping transform this area. In the central core of downtown, new pavilions, as you can tell, um, the new farmer's market pavilion is up and running. Um, uh, new pavilions and better access have created space to the Tri-Cities can gather for events and shopping opportunities, Cinco de Mayo um, festivals, fiery foods festivals, recent performance of the Mid-Columbia Symphony with artists from Colima, Mexico are the examples of family-friendly fun at the Peanuts Plaza space can offer uh, for the entire Tri-Cities. The city has been, will be, redeveloping the north end of Peanuts Plaza in the coming months um, and commissioning a sculpture of Mr. Fakuda, Noburo Peanuts Fakuda, who we named a Peanuts Park after. Now on to the Broadmoor area.
East and downtown Pasco are not the only areas for major uh, announcements. The Broadmoor, er Broadmoor area will be seeing a wide array of development, including major retail mixed use and residential development. This growth in the area of Pasco will require the city to improve vehicle, pedestrian, and bicycle access. Public safety. The growth of Pasco and the rest of the Tri-Cities has experienced, not to mention COVID, has placed challenges in our public safety personnel, but the city council and staff are taking advantage of the opportunities to build our strong commitment to public safety. That includes building new fire stations. Part of, the meeting, part of meeting the opportunities of growth is taking, uh, making sure that first responders have tools and facilities to help keep our public safe. The city has made significant invest investments in new fire stations on Burden Court and off to soon Road 100 to reduce the response times, which helps keep response times and insurance rates low for homeowners and businesses. District model policing. Part of the plan to move is to move the police to a district policing model to improve response times and build trust between the community and police by helping keep officers more in the neighborhoods they serve. The Pasco Police Department is continuing its strong work to build on its community policing model through community events such as Coffee with a Cop, robust social media outreach if you're not following Pasco Police Facebook page or Instagram, you're a little behind, so I invite you to check in with them. And their efforts to bring a Satellite State Police Academy to Pasco to train new officers here in the Tri-Cities. Future opportunities. The future of Pasco is very bright. With nearly limitless possibilities, we at On Council will be focused on the opportunities to improve city infrastructure, supporting efforts of the Pasco Public Facilities District to build an aquatic facility. I heard some of you were already prepared with your swimming trunks. <laughs> More to come on that very soon. The city will be looking for additional space for other community venues, continue, continuing efforts to improve housing affordability, working with our agency partners to tackle the challenges of homelessness and behavioral health service gaps, while at the same time keeping focus on the long-term vision for PASCO. And again, Dave, thank you very much. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to deliver a good message today. I cannot mimic what you do. I will, I will never be able to fill your shoes. But again, after 42 years of municipal service, including the last eight in Pasco, finally, Dave, thank you. Um, we're all heartbroken for your retirement, but we're happy for you to finally retire after 42 years. Um, thank you again, everyone. If there's any questions, I will include our contact information. And again, thank you to the Tri-City Regional Chamber of Commerce. Well, that, that is interesting that you brought up the swim chores because I was gonna show up today just to show you how excited I was about the announcement of the Aquatic Center in my favorite swim trunks. So I actually brought them along, so how, how fortuitous. Perfect. So thank you so much for those updates. Um, our next presenter, uh, boy, if you've driven anywhere in the Tri-Cities, <laughs> you cannot miss this uh, perfectly dressed individual. It actually, I feel like I have to step on my suit game every time I'm driving anywhere in the Tri City, anywhere in the Tri City. So well, well done, Michael. Michael was elected to Richland City Council in November 2017, and was selected mayor earlier this year. Michael and his wife moved to Richland in 1992 after both graduating college from New Mexico State University. Go Aggies! Yeah, I like it. Their children were born in Richland and are graduates of Richland High and WSU. Yeah, nice, okay, we're getting there. Michael is a veteran of the United States Marine Corps and is now currently serving as an active member of the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary. 
Michael's community service has included serving as commissioner for the Richland Parks and Recreation, board member for Blue Mountain Council Boy Scouts of America, charity organizer, and fundraiser for Safe Harbor, my, my friend's place. Big, big fan. And much, much more. Michael and his wife have owned a, and operated a successful financial company in the Tri-Cities for almost three decades. Michael is currently a Washington Realtor faculty member and member instructor teaching code of ethics, pardon me, of ethics, finance, business management, and advanced business management to professional associations throughout Washington State. Please help me welcome Mayor Michael Alvarez. You made it sound really official. Holy guacamole. <laughs> I'll give you this. Thank you, Holly. So, once again, thank you for that introduction. As mentioned, my name is Michael Alvarez, Mayor of City of Richland. Uh, thank you to the Tri City Regional Chamber of Commerce. Lori, you and your staff do an excellent, outstanding job uh, here in Tri Cities. I want to also go ahead and uh, say we're pleased to participate in, uh, with our neighboring cities. I appreciate the relationship and collaboration I have with each mayor and value their partnerships. And we all have them sitting at the table here. I have a lot of information uh, and a short period of time, so a lot of this I'm going to go ahead and read. Uh, but before I do that, I guess I, I need to go ahead and mention a few more people. First of all, we have an outstanding city manager. Uh, he has my back. I have his back. He is a great leader. He, he's, he's intelligent. He has heart. Uh, and so, John, I got to have you stand up, and, uh, and 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 everybody, would you give him a round of applause? Thank you very much. And also to the rest, we have uh, two tables here of city staff from the city of Richland. And I also want to go ahead and lastly thank we have uh, 500 plus. Uh, city employees for the city of Richland and without them we could not provide the services that our citizens uh, would like and have you know whether it comes from public safety roads public works all those type of items like that so I definitely want to go ahead and make and give a shout out to uh, our city employees because it's really important they make 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 everything happen for us all right I'm going to put on my reading glasses because this is a long ways down from where I'm reading Okay, so a lot of exciting new uh, things happening in Richland. As we recover from impacts of COVID-19, we see opportunities for continued growth and changes on how we do business and serve our uh, citizens. 2022, the citizens, excuse me, in 2022, the uh, city of Richland launched a strategic plan, planning initiative that began with a national survey, which was administered by a national research uh, center. The summer, uh, this summer, Richland citizens were polled uh, covering a wide range of demographics and geographic locations. The results were statistically valid, response benchmarked with similar communities throughout the country. Overall, the responses were very positive, with 85% saying Richland is an excellent or good place to live. Other categories deemed excellent or good were safety in, our, safety in your neighborhood, 93%. Quality of city parks, 85%. Quality of library services, 91%. Richland has a place to raise children, 88%, and by golly, we just want to keep that percentage to keep on going up. I think that's an awesome response for the citizens of Richland. Employment opportunities, 73%, excellent or good, higher than other benchmarked municipalities. Stakeholder groups will be convening this fall to provide additional input on this effort. Overall, this year-long strategic planning process is intended to establish a strategic vision and priorities for future years. We anticipate completing this effort in 2023. Regarding our current and future projects and initiatives, I'll update you today and guide you through our uh, six core focus areas. These updates will focus on recently completed projects and priorities uh, in the upcoming 2023 budget. We're promoting financial stability and operational effectiveness with a continual implementation of the Advanced Metering Infrastructure, or AMI, project. The project will fin finalize the implementation of an automatic metering system for our electric and water utilities. The project will include integration of the customer information system used by utility billing services, a meter data, a data management system, and a new customer porthole. The AMI system will improve utility operations and provide customers with usage data 
to make decisions on energy conservation and use. This project is underway with several meters having already been upgraded citywide. Uh, it will be completed and fully implemented in 2023. And I know my wife is here and she just told me the other day that, hey, by golly, we just got ours. So it, we're definitely uh, seeing improvements here uh, on that uh, aspect as well. And that's really gonna help uh, on the day-to-day, -day, on the monthly basis, uh, our citizens go ahead and see when the highest peak of usage is and when the lowest peak of usage is just to go ahead and conserve energy as well. So I think it's a great thing. And they'll be able to go ahead and look at their usage, look at their billing all online as well through a, with, an, with an app. All right, successfully managing and maintaining our city infrastructure and facilities is top priority. Construction on the center uh, parkway north extension connecting Tap Till Drive with Gage Boulevard has begun. The project partners have gathered a few weeks ago. Uh, to commemorate this long-awaited project. When completed, the project will include a three-lane roadway with bike lanes, curb, gutter, uh, and sidewalks. Both, uh, both have um, both sides of the street, a singleized at-grade crossing at the port of Benton Rail. The completed project will improve connectivity in retail services in Richland and entire Tri-Cities. And before you go back on that one real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and give uh, one of my fellow mayors a hard time here since they came late <laughs> and I'm going in their place. As you can go ahead and see, you know Bill, I was gonna go ahead and do it. We're, we're, we get along. So you can see on that picture there, the ground break in there. I think this whole thing here, you know, if you know where the old mill by the mall was off of Gage uh, and it cuts across down uh, to Tap Hill, would just make a great uh, pathway for retail all along Tap Hill. It's gonna be a really awesome thing. And the next thing there you see is uh, there's a mayor to my right, and there's a county commissioner to my left, and they knew I had a meeting right after this groundbreaking, and I was, in, I was the only one in a suit. And so you can see, I threw my de dirt straight forward, right? Well, you know what they did? They were conspiring, because they knew I had a meeting coming up next, and they opted to go ahead and say, hey, who's gonna go ahead and throw dirt on your sho shoes before he takes off? Luckily, they did not, and I was able to move on. Sorry, Bill, I had to go ahead and tell them that story. <laughs> All right, moving on. The intersection improvements on South Georgia Washington Way were planned in 2023. This project will add uh, lanes to several approaches at the intersection of George Washington Way with Columbia Point Drive and Adams Street. These lanes will improve safety, capacity, and mobility along with high volume portion of uh, George Washington Way since this is the most congested and most highly traveled local street in the Tri-Cities. And because it connects uh, to the downtown and waterfront development areas, this project will be a major strategic contribution to the success of the city's future. Increased economic vitality is the third uh, focus area. We will continue to speak uh, about opportunities for new businesses in Richland and find ways to support existing businesses. The city has seen significant residential and commercial growth in the last several years. We expect that growth to continue developing plans to deal with and increasing residential population and business investment is critical to ensure that operational and infrastructure needs are met. This slide provides a historical snapshot of the number of building permits used for single family homes, multifamily dwellings, and commercial buildings. While our commercial permits are down year to date, we are proud to have weathered the COVID with more businesses opening, opening than closing. Once again, with more businesses opening than closing. We can also attribute the slight decrease in permits to higher interest rates, staffing challenges for businesses, and supply chain shortages. Last year, we saw a significant increase in single family dwellings, and we have seen a shift in 2022 to an increased demand for multifamily housing. The city has seen a lot of growth and further potential development in the Horn Rapids area, continuing to invest in the roads and infrastructure uh, necessary to develop uh, this property allows new businesses to expand. We are, starting a, uh, we are starting a project in the business center to create approximately 20, 20 new one acre properties for industrial and commercial businesses which use, uh, which, uh, businesses uses which should finish in spring of 2023. In the next budget in capital project style, we are also working on connectivity within the industrial park and roadways to loop track and interior roads to create connectivity from uh, the, the business center at Kingsgate and ultimately to residential properties. We're working on the Horn Rapids master plan to update that and that will begin within the month and extend through mid 2023. The focus of North 
Uh, Horn Rapids uh, Industrial Area is a large, heavy industrial site that focus on, focuses on clean energy, battery and grid storage, industrial manufacturing, and, and agricultural manufacturing. With the Inflation Reduction Act, making funds and subsidies for clean tech companies are more available. Interest in these industries have risen to new levels and have, drained, and, and have generated more inquiries of our area as we position ourselves uh, to a clean energy hub for the state. We are all well positioned with WSU, PNNL, science and technology collaborations, highly educated workforce, and quality of life components lending to a nation, lending to a nation in attracting clean technologies in, to Richland and the entire Tri-Cities. The economy in at the intersection of Jadwin and George Washington Way was originally built in 1960. In June of 2022, the city of Richland purchased the Economy Inn Hotel, which had fallen in disrepair and has seen uh, increased crime. This project includes environmental radiation, demolition, and building and beautification of the site. This site is the gateway of downtown Richland. The city plans to add green space uh, to the site uh, until further development has been determined. And I think that would be a great thing once we go ahead and uh, are able to go ahead and, and demo that and put that down with some uh, landscaping and stuff and we decide what kind of uh, economic development we're going to do with that. I think that'll be just a great entry entryway coming back into Richland. All right. Next is the city seeks to ensure an adequate uh, funding to address off offset offsite impacts of any state sponsored project to improve the water quality in the mouth of the Yakima River. Bateman Island is located at the mouth of the Yakima River at its confluence with the Columbia River. The island is owned by the United States Army Corps of Engineers uh, and is leased by the city of Russian for recreational purposes. A private environmental organization commissioned a study that identifies poor water quality conditions in the mouth of the Yakima River because of the causeway. The Washington uh, State Department of Fish and Wildlife is now, the, uh, is now the project sponsor to evaluate the solutions to improve uh, the water quality. A coalition of tribes, federal and state agencies, local property owners, and private stakeholders have been formed to work together to develop mutually beneficial uh, solution. All right, maximizing community amenities. Uh, the city recognizes our community's deep passion for our park and network, uh, our park network, and we will continue to invest in efficient, uh, in efficient maintenance and operation of these valuable amenities. We'll soon begin construction of the West Village Park, a 30-acre uh, park in Badger Mountain South. A community outreach uh, effort was formed in late of 2021 and early 2022, including a survey and public open house houses to solicit feedback from neighbors, neighbor, uh, from neighbors and community members. The city anticipates soliciting bids for this project in the next few months. The initial phases will include, a, uh, include grading, athletic fields, irrigation, grass and play, playgrounds and a parking lot. This park is part of a development agreement uh, for this expanding neighborhood. And I think uh, you said earlier that I was a former uh, Richland Parks and Recs Commission. I think this is a huge accomplishment for our area. Richland has a lot of different parks within, within the city. And this is just one uh, example of what we're trying to do within the city of Richland for quality of life. Uh, it'll really serve that neighborhood as uh, that community is definitely going to grow in the next uh, few years. Howard Amen Park is one of the most popular amenities we have uh, in our in amenities. This includes a playground called Sturgeon Cove. In 2023, the playground is scheduled for a complete replacement as it is nearing its end of life and needs replacement. The city will work with a playground vendor for this project. Uh, the new playground will provide an updated, safe, and fun place uh, space for a, a variety of age groups. The City of Richland expects uh, to begin design uh, and construction of a new fire station 76 in Badger Mountain South. Uh, this area continues to show rapid growth. This facility will include space for, commu for community use and will be located uh, in, the, in the future 30-acre uh, West Park uh, mentioned earlier. Adjacent 50 acres of Richland School District uh, property 
uh, with, a, with an expansion, we are planning to add up to 12 fire, uh, fire and emergency personnel in the coming year. This is a great thing. We've actually built two new fire stations up in North Richland right now and hired more fire, uh, fire firefighters, AMTs, to go ahead and man those. Uh, I think it's been a huge thing for city council to go ahead and reduce response times in the city of Richland, uh, and we're doing that. And this is just another way of what we're doing in, in Badger Mountain South as, as that portion grows, is to go ahead and have community use within that uh, fire station, as well as re reducing spot response times uh, for quality of life as well for things such as cardiac arrest. All right, Richland Fire, uh, let's see, do, 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 do. I lost my space here. Richland Fire and Emergency Services uh, also celebrate an unveiling of the first AED uh, safe station in our community located at Howard Amon Park off of Lee Boulevard. This AED is accessible to the public 24 seven. Anyone in the vicinity, uh, vicinity can use uh, it in the event of a cardiac, uh, cardiac arrest emergency. The unit is, uh, is temperature con controlled, uh, sounds alarm when opened, provides clear instructions for proper use, and is equipped uh, with a GPS monitoring device. This, this effort is part of the Heart, Heart Safe Richland Initiative uh, with a mission, a mission to educate all citizens on the use of hand, hands-only CPR and e, EADs. I think this is a really important thing. You know, one thing I've, we, I, I, my wife and myself, we've taken CPR classes and hands-only CPR is, will, will save lives, but if you add AEDs in it, it goes tenfold on how, how many lives you can actually save. So I think this is a great thing. Last night in our city council meeting, I went ahead and talked to our chief, Chief Huntington, for the fire, uh, fire department, and so uh, he has another one that they're going to put in place in the city and I just think this is a great thing to put in strategic places within the entire Tri-Cities and that could be a collaboration with all the mayors and, and city managers also within within the Tri-Cities as well. It does save lives so I'm very proud that we're actually uh, getting that done. The Richland Police Department is making great strides uh, thanks to the leadership of our new chief Bridget Cleary. Uh, due to the realized and anticipated growth of Richland and our region, we are including funding in the 2023 budget to add five additional officers in this coming year. A high priority for the chief has been to uh, increase community outreach and consistent communication to maintain trust and rapport with our citizens. The department has also purchased a drone uh, that will further assist in our commitment to our community and increase officer safety. This technology will assist with investigations accident mapping, and search and rescue operations. This month, with the generous donations of local businesses, the department wrapped three squad cars to highlight breast cancer and domestic violence awareness in our community. Also, the Richland Police Department Foundation began selling pink patches in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This has proven to be a positive uh, outreach effort and encourages relationship, um, relationship building with health care facilities, businesses, community partners, and community members. Of course, uh, these are just a few highlights uh, and a small number of projects and initiatives happening in the city of Richland. More information regarding all projects and priorities are available at the city's website. It has been a pleasure to serve the citizens of Richland as the mayor. As you can see, we are, we, as you can see, things are ex, uh, ex, exciting things are happening here in store for our community and the entire region. I would like to uh, thank you all for the opportunity to address you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mayor Alvarez. So I hope you're sitting down. Okay, yeah, tough crowd, I get it. Uh, this next bio is one of the more impressive bios I've read, um, whether it was up here or really anywhere in my career. So um, I apologize if I don't look up and engage you, I just wanna make sure I get this right. So the next mayor to speak will be Mayor Pro Tem, Ted, Fr excuse me, Ted, I already screwed it up and I was looking at it, Fred. Fred Brink from the city of West Richland. Fred is currently in his second term on West Richland City Council. He also serves 
on the Board of Directors for the Association of Washington Cities, Washington State's Emergency Management Council, the Benton County Law and Justice Council, Council and several other local committees. A graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy, Fred served in the U.S. Navy as a surface warfare officer for six years prior to becoming a special agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. In 2009, Fred retired from the FBI after completing a field command assignment as a special agent in charge of the FBI for the state of Mississippi. He and his family then moved to West Richland when he accepted the position of counterintelligence program manager for PNNL, where he served 10 years, retiring in 2019. Fred's career decorations and awards include the Navy Expeditionary Medal, the FBI Investigative Excellence Medal. God, you really tested me here, Fred. U.S. Attorney's Award for Distinguished Service to Law Enforcement, the Department of Energy Distinguished Service Award, and numerous other commendations. He and his wife, Monica, have two adult sons who currently serve on active military duty, one in the U.S. Army and the second in the U.S. Navy. Please help me welcome West Richland Mayor Pro Tem Fred Brink. I have to manually advance the slides myself, so we'll see if I press the right button here. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Andy, for that very kind introduction. Um, I have uh, had the privilege of serving on the city council for several years, along with six other of my uh, colleagues, and it has been an extremely rewarding experience. We have a lot going on in the city of West Richland. Over the past year, the city of West Richland has enjoyed a steady population growth combined with moderate commercial growth. We currently have about 17,400 residents. A couple things that opened up recently include the firehouse uh, subs and sun market shown on the top uh, portion of this photo uh, near our Keene Road City Complex, and also the Red Mountain Event Center, which was revitalized in the last two years held several major events in the past couple years, including the Fall Classic, Apple Cup Race, a Benton REA annual uh, meeting, a monster truck rally, and a two-day 4th of July celebration. We're also welcoming in the city a number of other businesses. The Three Rivers Urgent Care Facility is under construction next to the Giza Credit Union which will also feature a Papa Murphy pizza shop, one of my favorites, and uh, animal grooming shop next door. Happo Credit Union is in the design phase and will start construction soon, uh, next to the Sun Market and Firehouse Subs on Keene Road. Dutch Brothers closed on a property in our Belmont Business District, which is in front of our City Hall complex, and the city partnered with Benton REA to have them relocate their headquarters facility off of Keene Road and Cooperative Way, and they'll be neighbors to our new police station. Also in the design phase is a new retail and food shopping center next to the Chevron gas station up at Paradise and Bombing Range Road. Rumor has it they'll be bringing a coffee shop and a daycare salon spa. And permits for a daycare center are also being processed right now for the city. So as you can see, the city's commercial growth continues, and we forecast over the next several years, we're going to have a new West Richland High School, pending, of course, citizen uh, bond approval. We have nine remaining lots in our Belmont Business District that are expected to sell pretty quickly as other purchased lots continue to develop. And then finally, our Paradise Van Giesen Business District is piquing the interest of many commercial developers as we have several hundred new apartments and single-family homes being developed in that area, which is near Rupert Road. So the city of West Richland, like many jurisdictions, has seen a jump in housing over the past years. However, because of rising interest rates, uh, supply chain issues that others have spoken of, we've seen a drop this year in single-family housing, but I'm happy to report that multifamily housing is on the rise. And I personally consider that very important for our community, that we offer diverse housing choices in these economic uh, challenges that we face now. We expect significant growth over the next decade as developers will build 4,200 new residential units. And those are either in construction, site development, or planning stages now. And of course, a significant 
uh, development area that I'm sure you have heard of is the Lewis and Clark sub-area plan that's in the process of master planning for 3,000 new homes and a commercial area which will rival the Queensgate Shopping Center in Richland. Of course, ours will be much better than Queensgate. So with brick and mortar construction going on, of course, there are other infrastructure needs. And uh, Cooperative Way is a, a new area that's being developed to accommodate Benton REA, uh, Benton Rural Electric Association. That's uh, a $1.1 million project. We received funding from the Washington State Community Economic Revitalization Board, Benton County, and also uh, Benton REA. We expect this construction to be done next week. Or next month, excuse me. <laughs> I better get out there if it's going to be next week. <laughs> uh, Belmont Business District in Keene Road. Uh, this, we're doing a lot of water and sewer and frontage improvements, another $1.1 million project. City funded from the sale of excess property, and the project is nearing completion. Of course, we have a lot of well replacement concerns. Uh, well 2, which is located in Flat Top Park, is older than myself. It was originally constructed in 1955. It's been out of service for about three years. This replacement's going to cost about $6 million. The pilot has been drilled and the well's moving toward production. It's funded through the Public Works Trust Fund and a congressional designation spending from Senator Murray. More well issues, Well 3, which is located near Tapteal Elementary, constructed in 1981 and it's been out of service for about 12 years. A $3.3 million project that will start next year and be completed in 2024. This one's being funded through ARPA funds. And then we have the uh, Well 10, which is uh, right in my neighborhood. I live very, very close to it. We're going to convert this well into an aquifer storage and recovery project at a cost of about four and a half million dollars. I think uh, Mayor Brent Gary spoke about this at a previous meeting as being an orca saving project. But uh, the reason being is because for those who aren't familiar with aquifer storage and recovery, this process involves capturing water when it's abundant, such as during uh, rainy seasons or during snow melts pumping it into the aquifer where it's stored and then recovering the water when it's needed, generally during the summer months. This project's in the testing phases and we will have to identify more funds to accommodate this project. Next one is a major intersection uh, at Bombing Range and Keene Road. Many of you may drive through that area if you live uh, anywhere in uh, South Richland or uh, in the western part of my city. Uh, and this is rare. How often do we take a traffic circle that currently exists there and replace it with a signaled intersection? So we're going against the grain here, but there are reasons for this. Reasons. Uh, building a double roundabout, which is standard here in the state for accommodating increased traffic, would have resulted in property condemnation for some of our neighbors that live right in that facility. I personally don't want to do that if it's avoidable. Plus, we have 15 to 18,000 vehicles that use that intersection every day. So we're very concerned about passenger or pedestrian safety, and a, and a bike path cuts right through that area as well. So we're concerned about bicycle safety. So uh, city council decided putting a signalized intersection there is the best move for everyone concerned. So we're taking bids in December. Contract will be awarded in January we'll probably have that project done by the end of next year. But I'm giving you a warning, if you drive through that area, traffic's gonna be a mess. So keep that in mind. Moving beyond waters and roads, um, Keene Road Pathway, bike path is being constructed using a combination of federal transportation alternatives program funding, which helps provide funding for pedestrian and, pass or pedestrian and bicycle facilities. It's going to connect with the regional pathway that runs through our area, and it's a relatively small cost. It's $700,000, but I think big benefits for our citizens that choose alternative ways to get to work or just for recreational purposes. And of course, I talked earlier about the Red Mountain Event Center. 
We're going to do uh, some water line improvements in that area, as well as sewer improvements for about $1.8 million. And this is a combination of rural county capital funds and city funds, so I have Benton County to thank for their partnership in this effort as well. And then finally, I'll talk about the last project, but it's the biggest one that our city is taking on to date. It's going to be a $30 million project uh, to transform a three-mile stretch of Van Giesen, SR-224, heading west from the post office out toward the Red Mountain AVA. And this is to improve and expand SR-224 to help it accommodate residential and commercial growth. Uh, we've used a variety of federal, state, county, and city funding sources. Construction is planned for the fall of 2024, and it should be completed a year later. So I'll conclude at this point by saying that uh, I'm, I'm blessed as a member of city council and on behalf of Mayor Gary to have an outstanding staff of more than 80 employees that handle the day-to-day -day work that this city has to do. We have a new police station in the last couple years. It's the pride of the Pacific Northwest. If any of you haven't seen it, I invite you to come out and see it. It's been the subject of many tours from many jurisdictions, and it has served as a model for the construction of other police stations in our state. Uh, Richland School District opened a new Desert Sky Elementary, and Benton County Fire District 4 set up a new fire station right next to our police station in anticipation of all the growth that's going to take place to the west of the city. The uh, fire district also was able to get an EMS levy lift passed this year to help maintain the high level of emergency medical response that our citizens rely upon. And I was privileged uh, just to host Ms. Deanna Dawson, who is the CEO of the, Associa or the Association of Washington Cities, which, as you know, advocates on behalf of all 281 cities and towns in our state, to give her a tour of our city, show her what we are doing out here. She was particularly impressed with the housing options that we're developing, all without state legislative directives. So I'm proud of that. So our city, our state of our city, Chamber, I'm, I'm pleased to report is outstanding. We're a vibrant and growing community with great neighborhoods which offer diverse housing choices, lots of parks and pathways, new schools, and a steadily expanding commercial base. Further, West Richland is consistently ranked as not only one of the safest cities to live in, but also one of the best cities to live in. Thank you. Okay, last but certainly not least, um, really excited to introduce our next speaker because I happen to be a resident in his city, so I'm especially curious as to what he has to say. Um, you know, in all seriousness, no, him and his family or, uh, contribute so much to our communities. You heard about his son earlier. Bill has been uh, an integral part of the Tri-Cities for a number of years. In fact, I, I know it's in your bio here and I'll probably hit on it, but I believe you and your wife moved here around 30 years ago, is that correct? Okay, well, gotcha. So Bill was elected to city council in 2018, elected as mayor in 2022. After moving to the Tri-Cities in 96, Bill worked at Iowa Beef Packers, then became a loan officer at Sterling Bank. He and his wife, Cindy, then purchased a six-acre farm in Kennewick. Their family business, 27th, 27th Ave Cell Storage, opened in May 2005. McKay's background in farming, along with having been a loan officer and small business owner, gives him a unique experience in working with cities as a developer, lender, and property owner. Bill is the father of four successful adult children. Again, we got to hear about one earlier today. I'm yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we should get into that. <laughs> Bill has volunteered with many organizations since moving to the Tri-Cities, including the Tri-Cities YMCA Board, Tri-Cities Prep High School Board, and various positions in his church. Currently, he is a board member for the Washington Self Storage Association. Please help me welcome Kennewick Mayor Bill McKay.
So, Mike, they saved the best for last. <laughs> um, turnaround's fair play, right? It's all good. <laughs> well, um, before I start as well, I would like to thank our staff um, at, the, at the city for the work they do and the uh, amount of things going on and that they keep it above board and keep it all going. It's, uh, it, you know, from this perspective, you get to see um, the amount of different things going at the same time, the amount of wheels are turning at the same time, and um, it takes a fair amount of work to, to get that all in sync. So thank you to the chamber for continuing to provide this opportunity to share a glimpse of what is happening in each of our cities. While we can all face challenges, the state of our cities has continued to demonstrate that we are a fast growing, vibrant, and resilient community. Even despite the recent challenges of coming out of the re restrictions of the pandemic, we have not missed a beat, and I am extremely pleased that the city of Kennewick has been able to continue to provide a high level of service to its citizens. Whenever we speak to our scope of services, we, under, we underscore the city council has established five priority areas. These priority areas provide the back, backbone of, to achieving the city council's goals as well as provide for a sustainable operating and capital budget for over 300 services to provide, services that impact the quality of our daily lives. Our five priority areas, community safety, responsible government, infrastructure and growth, quality of life, and economic development. Our council objectives are achieved through board programs in community safety, police services, emergency medical services, fire services, safe drinking water, code enforcement, and building safety remain on our top priorities. Some highlights, we continue to the, the, the commitments made to our community in fighting criminal gang and drug activity with public safety sales tax Benton County voters approved in 2014. This funding has supported additional police officers, additional support positions, implement, implementation of a cadet program, and additional mid-shift patrol unit. To address the rise in criminal activity, the Association of Washington Cities is lobbying for legislative reforms, specifically in response to mitigating the impacts of the Blake decision and how possession of controlled substances is handled by the criminal justice service system. AWC's priority also include addressing vehicle pursuits for public safety and supporting law enforcement's ability to conduct pursuits using a responsible, a reasonable suspicion standard. Additionally, police legislative reform continues to be a top priority of City Council. We also continue to work with the Benton County and other partner jurisdictions on a unified strategy, strategy to implement our regional program commitments for the safety of our community. Our businesses and residents have identified safe drinking water as their number one priority. Significant system infrastructure improvements and maintenance projects to safely supply our existing and growing population are funded. Construction of fire station number three across from the Three Rivers Convention Center was recently completed. Um, this station replaces the over 40 year old station located just next to the Benton County Justice Center. The construction is currently underway for our new station number one on 10th Avenue. The work, we work hard to ensure that the new fire stations are located in strategically advantageous locations in areas with high call volumes and near major response routes. The past year, the Ken Kennewick Fire Department developed a strategic plan to provide a roadmap over the next five years 
to ensure services meet the expectations of our com growing community. Um, a top focus for Kennewick is placed in increasing creative and flexible approaches to program outcomes and additionally leveraging community partnerships for the most efficient and effective delivery of services. Over the past four years, Kennewick has experienced a nearly 7% growth in population. By the year 2040, we're expected to have an increase of 36% to 117,000 residents. Our adherence to the budgeting, our budgeting by priorities model has allowed us to continue to align our resources towards the highest needs in these five priority areas and provide sustainability for our present population and future. The objective of this priority area is, is to maintain existing infrastructure and build new infrastructure to support economic development and expansion. Some highlights of our projects in design or currently underway are gauge and step toe intersection project, repair and, and improve aging water and sewer infrastructure, Streets and parks, partial fleet replacement, police and fire fleet replacement program, design and plan water transmission mains to support existing and future growth, which includes our uh, future um, industrial area across I-82. Our citizens and council have identified good roads as another top priority. This biennium, we invested an additional million dollars in pavement preservation projects on top of the two million annually allocated. Another major project currently underway is our advanced metering infrastructure, uh, AMI project. Our home and business, business will be getting a, uh, either a new water meter or new uh, smart register. AMI uses a low powered communication device that transmits hourly water usage information over a secure network. The new smart meters will help us to be better, better help us to better manage our water resources more efficiently and provide customers a tool to monitor their consumption. I'm pleased to announce that one of our most significant infrastructure projects is coming to completion, the US 395 Ridgeline inter Interchange which started in the spring of last year and, and is currently scheduled to be completed at the end of November. Traffic is scheduled to be, be moved back into the main US 395 route this week. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the ammunition. Anyway, the detour pass will be, re, be removed on on off ramps will be, con uh, let me start all over, I messed that up. The detour bypass will then be removed. On and off ramps will be constructed and additional northbound 395 lane will be constructed. The Zintel, Zintel Ridgeline roundabout will be constructed and the US 395 Hildebrand intersection expansion and new traffic signal work will all, all take place. The interchange will probably significantly enhance, significantly enhance connectivity of our growing Southridge area and provide more opportunities for economic development. Approximately 17 million of this project is funded through the state and federal transportation grants. It is nice to have these dollars coming back to our local community. One other uh, infrastructure project that's uh, in the works is of course, our infrastructure to the new industrial park area. Our focus on quality of life is to maintain our parks, provide for diverse entertainment options, and offer recreation programs for a well-planned community. We continue to work with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in partnership with our neighboring jurisdictions, community share stakeholders, and federal legislators on conveyance of Columbia Park. The city has a vision to be able to provide commercial activity to, pro 
to support and complement the recreation focus of Columbia Park, such as restaurants, coffee shops, recreation equipment, rental shops, etc. We are also continuing to work with our community partners to identify and implement creative solutions to afford housing and homelessness concerns. Some of our partner agencies, including the Housing Authority, Benton County, and our existing social services agencies. Supporting the arts promotes a sense of community and creates a, a fun public venues. The historic downtown Kennewick and surrounding area received um, creative district designation in the fall of 2021. We are one of the only 11 communities in the Washington to receive this designation and the only location in southeastern Washington. This designation will, was received from the Washington State Arts Commission. Eight more utility box art ramp wraps will be completed this year and the Kennewick Arts Commission is working on other partnerships to expand this program. We have a very cool interactive art map on the city's webpage with 44 art items displayed. Each display has a picture of the art piece with a brief description of the art piece and the name of the artist. Um, Council's overarching objectives in economic development are to support existing businesses and to create sustainable family wage jobs. It has been encouraging how the permitting activity has continued. It is a strong indicator of the confidence those investing in these develop, development projects have in the strength of the, and resilience of our economy. Nothing can speak more of the progress than looking at the big picture. What you'll see in our development map is progress all across Kennewick, east to west and north to south. The community has made significant investments and what is especially impressive is the investment coming from all sectors. New retail, new offices, new homes, new schools, new fire stations. Expansions of our medical services and one of the most important to our community, new places to eat. Still working on Chick-fil-A. <laughs> this development and movement comes from our confidence and from our partnership in growing our community. I encourage you to visit the city's webpage and take a look at this interactive map to see the progress that is hap uh, happening all around us. From our waterfront, and the continued transformation of Columbia Gardens with new tasting rooms and completion of the food truck plaza and with the infrastructure in place, including the city supported effluent treatment system for production wineries, the port has moved into the sales phase of the six acre development of five parcels. One has already been sold. In cap to capitalize our tourism, we cannot understate the importance of the connectivity and we are experiencing that within the completion of the Washington State Improvement Project. Connecting the historic downtown core with washing the waterfront, the Columbia Drive streetscape improvements and the Duffy's Pond portion of the walk bike path along the wine village and update the wayfinding signage in the vicinity. There is a new vibrancy in our historic downtown and increased demand for space due to the historic buildings, walkability and general vibe that provides a unique shopping experience and, town, and downtown still features some of the most economical lease rates. At Vista Field, our award-winning partnership with the port of Kennewick continues and we are excited about the transformation that will occur in, at Vista Field. Together we were able to leverage our individual resources and capitalize on creative financing solutions to implement unique development opportunities. The city also continues to do due diligence work on our public-private partnership for the expansion of the Tri-Cities Convention Center. 
This expansion will include a new convention hotel, future retail space, residential towers, and exciting new public spaces that align with the community's transformational vision for Vista Field. Moving over to Southridge, the significant investment the city has put into infrastructure, most notably Bobbles and Parkway, has literally paved the way for the current explosion of residential development in Southridge and our future vision for continued housing and commercial development for the southern gateway of the Tri-Cities with its high traffic counts. Our industrial expansion area, formerly known as the urban growth area south of I-82, is getting noticed since its, its annexation. The city is actively working with the prior property owner and Tridec to recruit light industrial to this area and working on the extension of water and sewer utilities to this area. At the city, we have a, ser a service culture focused on increasing creative and flexible approaches to program outcomes and leveraging community partnerships for the most efficient and effective delivery of services is also a top priority. Our success comes from our partnerships, shared strategies, and collaboration to improve a shared vision for our future. On behalf of the City Council and City staff, I thank you all that you, for all that you do, and we, would, we look forward to continue working together with you and and everyone. Thank you very much. You, you, you brought up the construction on 395, but I mean, you could barely even notice. <laughs> barely notice, Bill. Um, so thank you to all of our elected officials that presented today. We really appreciate you guys. Um, I'd like to give you guys a round of applause before we even get moving on.